Going home with your new baby. Congratulations on your new arrival. This short film is to give you important information that you need to be aware of now that you have had your baby. Your community midwife will get in touch with you following your discharge from hospital. If you do not hear from them by 3pm the day after you are discharged, please contact your local maternity unit. You have 42 days to register your baby's birth. Legally, it must be done within this time. Until you have registered your baby's birth, you will not be able to claim child benefits. For more details and to book an appointment to register your baby's birth, go online to the Gov website. What are the signs of a healthy baby? Regular feeding, wet and dirty nappies, normal coloured skin for your baby, warm, not too hot or cold to touch, and regular breathing. What should you look out for? Your baby being very sleepy or floppy, a high-pitched cry, fast breathing or a change in their breathing pattern, and a rash which doesn't fade. Jaundice in newborn babies is a common and usually harmless condition which causes yellowing of the skin and the whites of the eyes. In a small number of cases, jaundice can be a sign of an underlying health condition. If your baby is being monitored at home for jaundice, it is important to contact your midwife urgently if their symptoms get worse. For example, they become reluctant to feed and more sleepy. We will support you in your feeding choices, no matter what they are. Signs that your baby is feeding well includes Days 1 and 2, 1 to 2 or more wet and 1 or more dirty nappies. Days 3 and 4, 3 to 4 or more wet and 2 or more dirty nappies. Days 6 onwards, 6 or more wet and 2 or more dirty nappies. Your baby's urine should be pale and not dark brown. After your baby has passed the initial meconium and changing stools, your baby should be passing yellowy stools every day. At each postnatal contact, the healthcare professional will ask you how your baby's feeding is going. You could use this opportunity to allow them to watch a feed or ask them any feeding-related questions you may have. Bath or shower and change sanitary pads regularly. Let your midwife know if your stitches are painful and not improving. It is normal for your breasts to change during the first few days after giving birth and they are likely to feel uncomfortable. If your nipples are sore during a breastfeed, please ask a healthcare professional to check that your baby is correctly attached. If you have a red, hot, painful area on your breast and feel unwell, you may have a problem. Don't stop feeding as you need to keep the milk flowing. Headaches accompanied by one or more of the following symptoms are not normal. Visual disturbances, nausea and vomiting. Blood loss after giving birth will be like a heavy period for two to three days and then should become lighter. It is normal to have a little gush of blood if you have been lying down for a while and it is common that your blood loss is a little heavier after feeding your baby if you are breastfeeding. Sudden heavy blood loss or large clots bigger than a two pence piece may be due to some of your afterbirth being left inside you. It is also important to report the following. Fever, raised temperature, shivering, abdominal pain and or offensive smelling vaginal loss as these are signs of possible infection in your womb. If you have any symptoms of a urine infection such as burning, stinging or needing to go more frequently it is very important you discuss this with your midwife. It is normal to have some ankle and foot swelling for a short period in the days following birth from extra circulating fluid in the body. Elevating your legs by using a footstool when you are sitting down or putting a pillow under them when you are sleeping may help to reduce swelling. However, if you have swelling or pain in your calves, shortness of breath or chest pain, this may be a warning sign that you have developed a blood clot in your leg. If you have been prescribed blood thinning medication, it is important that you complete the course. If you experience any of the signs or symptoms, please contact the maternity advice line. Pelvic floor exercises. Having a baby changes your body and many women experience urine leakage, back pain or a heavy feeling in the area between your vagina and anus. If you leak faeces, this is not normal and you must consult a health professional. You can help yourself by doing pelvic floor exercises to help strengthen the muscles around the bladder, vagina and anus. Aim to build up to eight repeats three times a day and continue this forever. While sudden infant deaths are rare, it can happen and is tragic when it occurs. 
you can significantly reduce the chances of it happening by doing the following things. Always put your baby to sleep on its back, never on its tummy or side. Cot bumpers, toys and anything that could potentially suffocate your baby should not be in the cot. Place your baby with its feet to the foot of the cot with the bedclothes firmly tucked in and no higher than their shoulders. The safest place for your baby to sleep for the first six months is in a separate crib or a cot in a room with you. Do not sleep with a baby on a sofa or armchair as this greatly increases the risk of sudden infant deaths. A baby should never be left alone in an adult bed. It is particularly dangerous for your baby to sleep in your bed if you or your partner are a smoker, have been drinking alcohol, take medication or drugs that make you drowsy, feel very tired, or if your baby was premature or a low birth weight, for example, weighing less than two and a half kilograms or five and a half pounds. If you decide to bed share, please ensure you avoid the use of soft or bulky bedding, such as quilts, pillows and duvets, as this increases the chance of sudden infant deaths. Make sure your baby cannot fall out of the bed or become trapped between the mattress and the wall. The chance of a baby dying of SIDS is higher if babies get too hot. The correct room temperature for your baby is 16 to 20 degrees. Use lightweight bedding or a lightweight, well-fitting baby sleeping bag. As a rough guide, one more layer than you would wear or sleep under is about right for babies. If your baby feels hot, remove one layer. If your baby is unwell, it will need less layers. Do not add more layers. Rough handling of a baby or child, especially shaking, is dangerous and can cause serious injuries, possibly even death. Infant crying is normal and it will stop. Comfort methods can sometimes soothe the baby and it's okay to walk away if you have checked your baby is safe. Never shake or hurt a baby. Babies should never be exposed to cigarette smoke. You should ensure that nobody smokes anywhere in your home. Even when you smoke out of the back door or out of the window, 80% of cigarette smoke comes back into the house. Smoking around a baby or child doubles their risk of meningitis, can cause asthma and respiratory infections, and increases the risk of your child being admitted to hospital. If you, as the parents, are smokers, you should seriously consider stopping smoking. Advice can be found on the NHS Smoke Free website. Be vigilant. Common risks to babies and young children include blind cords, which can cause strangulation, suffocation, for example from nappy sacks, things in the cot such as bumpers and toys, pets, medication left lying around, and washing pods, as they can look like sweets. Ideally, do not have babies in car seats for longer than 30 minutes at a time. If on a long journey, take regular breaks. Many unplanned pregnancies happen in the first months after childbirth, so it is good to be prepared. Please be aware that you can still get pregnant while breastfeeding your baby. Think about it. Speak to your GP or local sexual health clinic. If you want to have contraception before you leave hospital, please speak to the midwife caring for you. During the first week after childbirth, up to 8 in 10 mothers get what is often called the baby blues. Baby blues are thought to be due to sudden hormonal and chemical changes that take place in the body after giving birth. Symptoms include feeling emotional and irrational, bursting into tears for no apparent reason, feeling irritable or touchy, and feeling anxious or depressed. All of these symptoms are normal and usually only last a few days. If your symptoms last longer or start later, you could have postnatal depression. This can start any time in the first year after giving birth and is a common problem, affecting more than one in every 10 women. It can also affect partners too. It's normal not to enjoy being a parent all of the time. It is important to seek help as soon as possible if you think you might be depressed. With the right support, which can include self-help strategies and therapy, most women make a full recovery. Signs that you or someone you know might be depressed include a persistent feeling of sadness and low mood, lack of enjoyment and loss of interest in the wider world, a lack of energy and feeling tired all of the time or trouble sleeping at night, difficulty bonding with your baby and frightening thoughts, for example, about hurting your baby. Many women don't realise they have postnatal depression because it can develop gradually. If you think you might be depressed, 
Please speak to your healthcare professional about local support groups. If you think that your partner may be depressed, encourage them to seek help. Don't forget to call your GP and let them know you have had the baby so they can register them as a patient and book your six to eight week GP checkup appointment for you and baby. Thank you for taking the time to watch this film. If you have any questions about anything you have seen in this film, please discuss them with your midwife.